Morning peeps, good morning everyone. How's everyone doing? Hope you guys are all doing well. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, like, share, subscribe. All right, let's talk about the press conference that happened on Monday for the announcement of AJ versus Nganu. We found out what the fight card is going to be called, Knockout Chaos. We also found out what the undercard is going to be as well. Some really good fights on the undercard. The standout has to be Joseph Parker versus Yili Zhang. I mean, Joseph Parker's run in the last couple of years is sensational. It really is. Uh, win or lose, when he fought Joe Joyce, Joe Joyce was a top five heavyweight. When he fought Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder was a top four heavyweight. And now he's fighting Jili Zhang. And Jili Zhang, at worst, is number five. That's what Joseph Parker's doing. And he's staying busy. I think this will be, by the time the fight rolls round, this will be Joseph Parker's fifth fight in 14 months. Something like that. That's ridiculous. And you've got to applaud it. So well done to Joseph Parker. I'm happy that he's getting a big fight after the big win against Deontay Wilder. And who knows, he beat Zhili Zhang. If he were to beat Zhili Zhang, he has to be in the title mix. He has to. I mean, there's a lot of talk about the winner of AJ Ngannou versus the winner of Fury Usyk. If Joseph Parker puts a beating on Zhili Zhang, and I don't know if he will, his name has to be back in there. It has to be. I mean, you don't you don't beat Wilder and Zhili Zhang and still be on the outside. You have to be right on the inside in that mix. It has to be. So well done to Team Joseph Parker for getting that fight done. And well done to Zhili Zhang as well. He's been waiting for a big fight since that Joe Joyce win. He's now got a big fight. And the same for him. If he were to beat Joseph Parker, he has to be in the mix. He has to be in the conversation. In fact, he's already in the mix, but he'll be thrown deep into the conversation if he wipes the floor um, with Joseph Parker. All right, let's talk about the face-off. Who better to talk about the face-off than the guy that did the face-off? Yours truly. I sat down with um, Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou. AJ came in first. And obviously, AJ is a big guy, right? We know he's a big guy. Ngannou walked in and I looked at AJ like, my God, this guy's massive. Like AJ, I don't think I've ever been around AJ. Look, he's been around big guys. I've been around AJ Wait, Dillian White's a big guy. Hellenius is a big guy before that. The likes of Klitschko, Dominic Brazil, they're all big guys. But AJ is very comparable to them, if not bigger than them. And if the likes of Hellenius and Dominic Brazil, they're not big in terms of muscle. They're just tall, tall and, and quite wide. Nganu is enormous. Like his frame when he walked in. I mean, <laughs> we'll talk about the face off in a minute. But after the face off, AJ was like, geez, he's big. And I was like, I know. And we were just talking, all of us together, me, AJ, Freddie Cunningham, AJ's manager, we're all talking about the size of Nganu. Like, I don't think AJ thought he was that big. I think AJ did some, um, some media with him in Barcelona. So they're putting like a little trailer together. AJ did some media with him, I think a couple of days before. So AJ met him two days before. But I think prior to that, I don't think AJ has ever met Nganu. And... I don't want to say AJ looks small because AJ is 250 pounds. AJ is a big guy. But AJ did look undersized <laughs> compared to Nganu. Nganu looked like he was walking around at about 280, 290. He looked enormous. And um, yeah, it was interesting to see these two bricks square off like this. Um, look, I'm not going to give any secrets away as to what the face-off was, but it was respectful. I felt very respectful between the two. Um, it wasn't, it certainly wasn't a Devin Haney Regis Progray. They weren't swearing and pointing fingers and saying this and saying that to each other. It, it wasn't that. But Nganu was very, very confident, very confident. And, you know, every time he spoke, he wasn't looking at me. He was speaking directly to AJ. Sometimes when you do these face offs, you realize that the person that you're talking to is almost having a conversation with you to then have a conversation with the fighter, if that makes any sense. So rather than go straight at the fighter, they kind of go to me, Ade, but I said this, and like they want me to almost relay the information. Every time Nganu spoke, spoke, he was going directly at AJ. Directly at AJ. Like, just uh, so confident. So confident. Again, this is a guy whose journey is just... I mean, you guys, if you, go, if you don't know the journey, I mean, I know everyone's journey in boxing because boxing really is a story of hardships, isn't it? So everyone's journey to the top is a tough one. But in Garnu's stories, I, I think different than anyone I've ever heard. Like it's it's incredible how he's even got here. And the fact that, you know, his first two fights in boxing are Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury is just, I mean, it's testament to this guy's ambition, stubbornness, desire, his dreams, everything. Everything sort of rolled 
in one. But yeah, it was it was interesting to see AJ's demeanor demeanor, sorry, against Ngannou. Because AJ normally is quite aggressive on the front foot. That like he makes you know I'm the big boss in the room. But it was a bit more like he sat back a few times in his chair. I know that might be small, but he sat back. Whereas Ngannou was very, I don't know if you guys have seen the photos, and Ngannou was very sort of on the front foot a lot. Um, yeah, I, this is quite hard to explain, but um, normally with these face-offs, the chairs are kind of turned around. So the, the back of the chair is the front and they're kind of leaning over it. That's how it works. It looks better on camera. When AJ walked in, I asked AJ, could you turn your chair around so we can do it that way? AJ, fine. I asked Ngannou to do it when he walked in. He's like, no. He said, do you not see what I'm wearing? And I was like, yes, I see it. The African robe. It was like, why would I sit on this chair wearing this like that? And I was like, okay, this is going to be a tough one. <laughs> but after that, he kind of warmed up. He warmed up to it. And um, I did ask him a question. I said, tell AJ how you're going to win. And it was the first time he kind of just switched a bit in terms of, you know, very respectful, very respectful, very respectful. Then it was killer, killer. And he looked AJ dead in the eye and, you know, I'm going to knock you out type thing. So, um, yeah, it, it was, it was interesting. I mean, you guys know their personalities. I mean, sometimes when you do these face-offs, you, you kind of just know which ones are going to spark and which ones aren't. And you're going to have to kind of, my job is to, um, push and push and probe and probe and probe. But sometimes you get those people that are like that. Like when I did Sonny versus Bam, I know Bam isn't going to really talk. I know they're going to deliver in the ring and that's the most important thing, right? But I know Bam isn't going to talk. When I did Lee Wood, Josh Warrington, same. When I did Chris Eubank, Connor Ben, you know they're going to go. So sometimes you just go into these knowing that the guys aren't really going to go at each other. Like there's no bad blood of history between the two. It's not like AJ, Dillian White, do you know what I mean? Or if AJ were to do one against Tyson Fury, that would go off. Fucking hell, that would be incredible, that would. That would be incredible, isn't it? AJ versus Fury face-off. But um, no, these two, very respectful. Um, again, what you guys don't see in the face-offs, obviously, is obviously you just see us three, right? In front of me, I mean, it's packed. It is packed. There's 30, 40 people in the room. Everyone's just watching cameras, video. There's about, it's probably about 10 cameramen in there. Four photographers, social media people getting their clips, management, AJ's team, and Garnu's team. Everyone is in the room. So um, it's actually quite, it's actually a bit of pressure to make sure you get it done. But look, we got it done. Um, obviously, what are we now? 17th of January, the fight's March 8th. So we're not seeing that for a couple of months which is ridiculous when you think about it. Yeah, it's a long time away, isn't it? I say a couple of months, about four or five weeks we're not going to see it for. But yeah, it was good. It was good to do it. Again, two guys that we know are going to get in the ring and try and take each other's heads off. I think AJ has looked good recently, right? Two stoppage victories or a stoppage victory in Alanius, a corner stoppage against Otto Volin, but he's now back. And if you're in Garnu, you would have, and he mentioned this in the face of, you would have questioned whether or not you've got the gas tank for 10 rounds, you'd have questioned whether or not you're really good enough to compete against the top guys. And all those questions were answered against Tyson Fury, like all of them. I know you guys can hear my um, smoke alarm. I know. You know what the problem is? The reason I can't change the battery, I'm in an apartment, this is a complete big segue, where the ceilings are fucking so high. Ceilings are like so high. I don't have a ladder. And even if I did, it's in the middle. It's in the middle of the room. What am I going to do? So I've called um, I've called someone to come and sort it for me. I know. Thank you for everyone that's concerned. Yeah. So look, um, I look forward to it. I look forward to seeing how um, how it comes out. These things are always edited. Obviously, they're not going to put out a full what was it, forty five, fifty minute face off. They're going to make it probably twenty minutes, and it'll be twenty minutes of goodness that makes me look really, really good at my job. But yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, the press conference didn't really kick off, did it? Didn't really nothing. Nothing really, um, nothing at all, in fact. I mean, AJ didn't really say anything bad about Ngannou. Ngannou didn't say anything bad about AJ. I remember when I went to the Fury Ngannou one, that was way more entertaining because Fury obviously decided to take the mic, stand up and do what Fury does. Obviously, AJ isn't that. They're two completely different personalities, two completely different people. So the press conference didn't, I was going to say didn't deliver, 
Not that it didn't deliver, but you, you hope something happens. I don't know why. That's what they're there for, right? Press conferences aren't just there to announce fights. They're there to sell fights. And yes, we got the announcement of AJ and Garnu, but we didn't really get any sell, did we? Nothing much. So um, we'll see. One thing that did happen was His Excellency uh, Turkey uh, Alal Sheikh, who I went to go and speak to. I'll, I'll tell you guys about that in a minute. He obviously said that he wants to see a few things happen. Bivol versus Baturbi, of which I hear is done for June. Crazy. And what's crazy as well is that's not in Riyadh season. So that means they are doing fights outside of Riyadh season. But he did say he wants to see Frank Warren versus Eddie put up their best or, or five fighters, not best, but five fighters go up against each other, which would be exactly what we want. Sensational. That's what we want, right? That's what we want. You know what I really want though? Like what I really, 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 really want is for Saudi money to do events. I know this might, like, why would they do this? But for the, the Saudi money to do events in the UK. That's what I really want. When I sat down with Frank and Eddie, I asked them that. I said, look, what's the chance? Because as a, a fight fan that's grown up with big fights in the UK, and we've had big fights, you know, in recent years in the UK, I don't want, in my head, it looks like all the big fights are going to Saudi now. All of them, like everything, right? Everything, and we're left with not very much in the UK. Are we gonna get some of that Saudi money and maybe do a big event in the UK? Like, can we do that? And Eddie and Frank were kind of non-committal on the answer. Was like, mm, they didn't really say yes, they didn't really say no, um, but, but we'll see, we'll see. And, and I've said this and, I'm going to keep saying it. If if you are a fighter, I think this is the only problem going forward. And it's, it's, if you're a fighter, the purses that you know these fighters are getting paid in Saudi, and look, good luck to the fighters. Congratulations. It's the most dangerous sport in the world. Get fucking paid, right? Get paid. But if you are that fighter and you're seeing what some of the, and fighters talk to fighters, you, you know what fighter A is getting paid in Saudi for going over and fighting in Saudi, you're gonna to wanna to fight in Saudi. So when your management team come to you and they offer you, I don't know, whatever it is to fight in London or Manchester or Liverpool, you're like, oh, one second, I'd rather wait for a big event in Saudi. So that's gonna be, I think, a bit of a problem going forward. I really do think it's gonna be a problem. And it's, we'll see how um, Frank and Eddie navigate it. That's why I'm saying it'd be good if we could have a Saudi-esque card in the UK. Like, let's not forget where all of this works and it works here. Do you know what I mean? So hopefully that happens. Fingers crossed. Who knows? Uh, Tasha Jonas, Michaela Meyer uh, this weekend. Um, uh, Jonas defending her, what is it, IBF? Is it World's Weight title? I think it is IBF World. I think all the other belts have gone, right? Um, interesting fight, this one. Very interesting. Um, both girls out of their weight class. It's true, isn't it? Both of them jumping up. Uh, to a weight which is not natural to them. Michaela Meyer looks like she's got the frame to handle it, but it is Tasha Jonas has been up at that weight even higher, I think, right? So she, 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 she's more used to it now. Should be a good one. Uh, looking forward to it. Massive fan of Tasha, massive fan of Michaela as well, but I do have a lovely soft spot for Natasha Jonas. I think what she's done in recent years has been fantastic. I think she's, I think after boxing, she's got a great career in commentating, presenting. And she's from Liverpool and I'm a Liverpool fan. So look, good luck. Good luck to her. All right, let's have a quick look and see if there is anything else um, to talk about. Oh, by the way, uh, another fight on that card, Nick Ball versus Ray Vargas. Do you know what I mean? They're just, they're just putting these cards together. They're just putting these cards together, man. Nick Ball versus Ray Vargas would headline a Frank Warren card over here, 100%, right? Um, Zhang versus Parker, one trillion percent would headline a fight card over here. And obviously the big one, AJ and Garner. Not quite sure about the name Knockout Chaos. No, I feel like they've stolen my chaos in Lagos. That's what I feel like. Uh, Joe Joyce versus Cash Ali in play for March 16th. Is Cash Ali been fighting? That's a, that's a drop down. I know he's had two defeats back to back, Joe, but that's quite a big drop down. But look, stay busy. Stay busy. Joseph Parker did the same thing after he's lost to Joe Joyce. He dropped down had five fight or four fights, the full fight being Deontay Wilder. So as long as you stay busy, I'm not too mad at it. All right, let's have a look and see what Cash has done in the last couple of years. He lost on points uh, in July to Bowden Mirinets, who was six and one. Before that, he had a fight against Reese Caney, who was two and one. Before that, he beat Roman Gorse, who was seven and one. Okay. 
All right, anyway, look, it's just good to see Joe Joyce back and look, we'll see Cash can punch a bit, but at a really, 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 really low level. Um, I think I saw the face-off today I did for Mungia versus Ryder. Good fight. I am actually presenting that one in the States. Um, I'm presenting that. Then I stay in the States and I um, I then do um, Conor Ben's fight. Um, do you guys want to know my schedule? So I stand, I, I do that Mangia fight. I stay in the States, do the Conor Ben fight. I come back. There's a next gen card, isn't there? There's a next gen card, Reese Bellotti. It was supposed to be size Pattinson's fight. He, he's rematched, but he got injured. So yeah, I stay, I come back and do this next gen fight. And then I think it's all systems go, I believe, for Fury Usyk. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty busy. Um, but Terby of Taunts Bivol, last five years, everyone... Last five years, he's been telling everyone he's going to fight me next. I mean, yeah, but it's not like he's been sitting on his ass. He's, he's had some big fights. I mean, Canelo's big. Canelo's very big. And obviously, Gilberto Ramirez. And then this one against Lyndon Arthur. Look, on, on what have you done for me lately and recent resume, Baturbiev is the number one light heavyweight on the planet. Um, I think Bivol's the better fighter. I still think it. But Baturbiev's resume of recent, and not what, not just, not just the resume. It's what he's doing to these fighters. Like he's breaking them in half, like breaking them, like really fucking them up. So um, it's a great fight. It's a great fight. I mean, both of them have got some really good wins on the resume. I think you have to edge towards Baturbiev. Yeah, you have to, because at some stage you feel like he might. As good as Bivol is a boxer, let's not forget Baturbiev is a great boxer as well. But you do feel like he will get to Bivol. And Bivol's then got to stand and trade with him. Bivol can smack a bit, but no one, no one can hit as hard as Baturbiev right now. So um, yeah, be interesting to see how that one plays out. All right, anything else? Let's have a look. Um, no, nah, it's rubbish. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, okay, Martin Bacoli versus Cassius Cheney. Heavyweight title fight ordered by the W. Who the fuck is Cassius Cheney? I'm losing all my boxing stripes here. I have no idea who that is. Do, do you guys know who Cassius Cheney is? Let's have a look. 23 and 1, 16 knockouts from the United States of America. Oh, okay. Beat Trevor Bryan last time out. You ain't getting no plaudits for that, my friend. Uh, before that, beat Matthew McKinney. Before that, George Arias, who was unbeaten. Okay. Oh, sorry, lost to George Arias, who was unbeaten. Um... Martin Bacoli needs to get in this. I keep mentioning Martin Bacoli's name. He needs to get in this mix. He needs to somehow get in the mix. I don't know. I don't know how he does it. All right, guys. Anyway, um, we are done. Peace and love. Thank you for the support as always. We will continue to knock out the videos. We are getting way more consistent. And by the time you guys watch the next video, the smoke alarm battery will be changed. Promise.